Is it good? Whew. Hey guys. <laughs> Welcome to Gun Talk. Control Pair Munitions live as usual on YouTube, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Oh, our podcast. A little out of breath because we're just running around the shop. I had some minor technical difficulties where um, everything was set up and then it wasn't. So, it's been fun. <laughs> So it's seven o'clock ish. I still need to change that on the on the thing. Um, but as always, I'm your host Jared, uh, owner of Control Pair Munitions, and uh, with me as always we got Raul, Cell Central. What's up, man? What up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> so he's uh, he's running our stuff. He's not even having the mic in front of him right now, so you probably can't even hear him. Uh huh. Look at you. See, that's how unorganized. Well, not really unorganized, just. It was weird tonight, man. It's been really weird. Like, all the stuff I set up last week with the name tags, gone. Out of everything. So I had to rebuild all that stuff. All the cameras got lost. All the information. Everything gone. So I had to relearn, like, every... YouTube ugh. hates us. It was... It does. It does. I don't know if it was YouTube or it was probably our stream system. Our guest tonight. <laughs> so, speaking of tonight... Uh, is Wendy. Wendy's a great customer of ours. Uh, she's been a customer of ours for three years. Well, oh, three and a half years. Uh, she came to us several months after we first opened up. Uh, she owns and operates shi uh, Sight Shooter. She's going to talk a little bit more about that, what she's doing and uh, with that and uh, where that's going and where you plan on going from here. and um, Maybe even a little bit of the couple of guns that she may or may not own. So... Uh, <laughs> Don't say a pre uh, exact uh, thing because you, you might be a. Uh, I, I don't know if I could use that word because we're on YouTube terrorist. But uh, <laughs> 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 right, if they look Kicked at out. you, and, yeah, right, <laughs> you are now done. Um, if they think that you are, that then they're they're pretty dumb. But we, yeah, that ain't saying <laughs> yeah. much. So well, yeah, they are. They're, they're, my opinion is they're dumb. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you're listening, you're dumb. All right. <laughs> Wendy, go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Um, my name is Wendy. I don't use my last name because it's one of those great Polish last names. Right. I can't pronounce it right. I never have. No, the only one that can pronounce it here is Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's got one of those nice long Greek names. <laughs> and I, my story is back in the late 60s, my dad made me take a hunter's ed class because he and my mom were pheasant hunters in southern Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Fast forward 50 years, and I ran across somebody teaching women on target, and I thought, well, my husband has two pistols. I should know how to use them. Yeah. He still has two. <laughs> <laughs> and Jared has a good idea how many I have. Right. Right. Just a couple. Yeah. Yeah. There's only two on the wall, and that's all that we know about. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, uh, I just became, after I took that class, it was like, I'm hooked. So mm -hmm. I ended up taking a lot of training. I'm a fully certified NRA instructor in all that they offer. And I'm looking at other types of certifications that are being offered out there and saying, nice. the more I have under the belt, the better I can teach. Right. I, I agree with that. And I know that you're, you've been traveling around the country, um, taking other classes, getting other certifications. Uh, you just came back from another conference. Yeah, I was uh, down in uh, Georgia. It was called The Mingle. The Mingle. And it was 60 women, and it was so great because I met people that I've gotten to know on you, on Facebook, and it's now I can put faces and names together, and it was just a great time. I learned some tools to help me improve my shooting, but also... I can bring them to my students. Nice. No, that's that's really good. And then um, you were you were just gone for another one too, uh, but you're going to one again in a, like a week. Uh, no, this is a mastermind for helping me um, form my business better. Okay, well that's still good. That's still good training. Oh, especially since where I'm going. Right, and that's right. It's uh, the Dominican, Dominican Republic. I've never been there. Right. That's awesome. So. Uh, being the Dominican Republic, it's probably gonna be racist and shit. But are you getting trained by monkeys? Because it, isn't it like mostly jungle down there? <laughs> I have no Girl. idea what it's like. Me neither. Me neither. I mean, I've spent, they've sent pictures of the place we're staying, and it's like one of the other people says, "Well, that's a twim two swimsuit place." Yeah. 
Uh, I had uh, an aunt and uncle that lived down in Puerto Rico for a few years, and uh, they would send pictures, and uh, it was wide open jungle. They would have uh, a whole bunch of different monkeys and shit, li- you know, living inside of their house with them, and <laughs> oh my it, it was cool. I mean, I don't know, if a lot yeah. of people. And then everybody's like, now the monkey box, which don't fact check. They don't. Co- I don't know. Okay, so if it's the same <laughs> shit. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I've heard about it, but I have no idea where it comes from. And they're saying, the last I saw today is they found a very few cases, right. but seven states. Yeah. Yeah, There's there's been a few, supposedly. Yeah, I don't know. Every time I look at the news, it's something else. It's, it's some new disease, some new mass shooting, some new something. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> they're trying to scare us. Yeah, yeah. So, unfortunately, that's how it is. Um, so, Sight Shooter, uh, it's been up and going for two years? Well, I've had the corporation for a little longer than that, but really pursued it actively the last couple of years. And generally how I do it is uh, private to low number classes mm-hmm. because I feel people learn better when you can get more um time with the instructor you get more individualized training yeah no and that's really good one-on-one stuff you do get a lot uh more instruction i think and, and it, it being a hands-on uh practice it, it does help you or, or or the shooter uh learn and get more uh allocated to uh that that type of uh system so yeah. that that's really good yeah. um it, it's hard to go into a big class of people and um uh, yeah, go ahead, dude. You, you, you take good. it off? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a little after. Oh, yeah, you're good. So di- you didn't know this, but I made you a special little nameplate, and uh, it was playing right next to you somewhere. And uh, that <laughs> was one of the other side. things. I'll have to look at it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to look at it. it. It's special. I just started it last week. That was one of the things I had to rebuild again because it was all there, and uh, it, it's all gone because yeah. whatever, because the streams. Yeah, the streams. Yeah, because I understand the size of a big class. Um, I'm also at, involved with uh, the Annie Oakley program, which is for yeah women shooters. Yep. And at the last minute, they said, can you teach tonight? And I ended up with at least 20 in the class. Oh, wow. And then, But what's great is we have enough where coaching, it's maximum of one coach to two people and if they get more out there then it's one-on-one coaching well good good no that's really good um and i know that's a great program it's uh still run by the nevada firearms coalition yes right which uh if you guys are locals in vegas uh it's a good program to be a part of it's 25 dollars a year i think yeah, 25 a year and one mm-hmm. big benefit is uh, on the second friday of the month they have a free shoot oh and even if you go to the county, it's 10 bucks every time you go. Mm-hmm. And so you figure if you went 12 times, that's 120 bucks. Yeah. You can go 12 times for the free shoot, and it's $25. Yeah. Yeah, so you're, you're saving a, a good amount, at least 95 bucks. Yeah. If you go. Yeah. Yeah, you, you should have to go, though, you know, yeah. It's good to go. Training and, and, and shooting's good, right? And, and it's, what's great about something like that is, other people have guns that you don't have yes and so they uh, you know here try my gun (laughs) that's always good we kind of do that every time we go out and do different stuff too like when we did the desert day thing and oh yeah and everything else that's kind of where i got into uh 1911s yes yes you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) yeah uh in fact i can remember one of the guys here at one time said, you don't have a 1911 yet? <coughs> yeah. Now I've got double digit. Yes. Yes, that's two for those of you that do math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's two digits, one and one yeah. equals two. <laughs> that, it's but, a couple. But I find it's a good format to, I mean, it's, a, it's been around since 1911. Yeah, yeah. No, good, good gun. That was Adam, wasn't it? That, that uh, said you didn't have a 1911? I actually think it was Mike. It was Mike? But Adam was the first one to let me use one. Oh, okay. Nice. It was probably the one, his Colt one that he polished and all that other fun stuff, or no? Yeah, I don't know. Don't and know. Uh, ever since I shot that one, I go, 
I like these. So I have them all the way from 22 caliber to 10 millimeter. Nice. Nice. Um, so <laughs> I'll ask that in a minute. So, uh, <laughs> so one of the things too, uh, which, which is really cool for those of you guys that might be listening to us on Spotify or, or Google or wherever you listen to your podcast is we do get live questions here and we just got our first one, Woo! which is awesome. And, uh, so we got our first question and, uh, we'll get, we'll get to that here in a minute because, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about all that, but anyway, uh, <laughs> no, it's it's actually it's a true thing though, so it's a uh, uh, it's a good question. Um, I do uh, uh, I like the Annie Oakley program, and it's so you guys know too. If you guys are Vegas locals and you're a female, uh, it's free. Yes, it's free. Uh, it's all by women for women uh, only women. And, uh, like, I've wanted a coach there uh, to help out. Yeah, right now we're using men mostly as safety officers. Okay. And we warn the, the women in the class, hey, there may be guys out there. And if you don't want them, just say, hey, get away, and they'll make sure a female coach comes over. Yeah. And see, that's good. And they didn't even have that before. No. Um, and then you guys have only been back a little while since COVID uh yeah. Got rid of everything. And then um, there's been a shakeup in how it's been run, but they're telling us now they're looking at expanding it. Uh, three places in the south, Boulder, Henderson, Pahrump, and then Reno. Wow. Well, that was really cool. And then uh, the NRA, NRA is looking at the program because it's unique. Yeah. It is unique, and it's a great program, especially for, again, women that are newer shooting. And they they are, they want to get into a sport, but they don't know how to go about it. And they want to make sure they do everything safely and, and everything else. So it's a great thing that you guys do over there uh, for that. And then that is also held at the Clark County Shooting Complex. Right. For those of you guys that don't know. And you can find all that information on the Nevada Firearms Coalition website. It's called the Annie Oakley Program. Or you can go ao-lv.org. There it is. See? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know there was a specific one, but well, yes. Well, the person that's uh, the secretary of the coalition also has a business uh, that works. So she does websites, and oh, s nice. simple websites and stuff. So they're really trying to make the program as professional as they can. That's good because I remember it just being a little blurb in the Nevada Firearms Coalition website. And you had to kind of search for it a little bit. And it was kind of, kind of a pain in the butt yeah. to get. So I'm really glad that they did that. That's That's really nice. So the question that we got asked is from like, oh yeah, happy anniversary by the way. Same to you. Yeah. So uh, uh, surprise, it's both of our wedding anniversaries. It, we're not married, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> our spouses aren't here. <laughs> so we're spending our anniversary together, which is odd. Yeah. 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 Our anniversary is plural. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, your your spouse is in the hospital. He's doing okay though, right? Yeah, he's yeah. doing great. He should come home tomorrow. That's just good. one night. That's good. That's really good. I remember when that stuff would take you out for a long time. Yeah, well, it was interesting how they did it. Everything yeah. went up through an artery in his arm. It's to the arm. Wow, because I've heard that a lot of the times they choose the thigh. Yeah, and yeah. that was backup. Oh, okay. That's good. Because it for me is like there's so much stuff <laughs> yeah. in between i don't know that's a long way to travel <laughs> <laughs> well you figure going up the arm and around that's still a long way that's to still go. a long way it's still it's shorter though you know depending on which one it is um so the question was got off topic um is is it said women shoot better than men and do you feel that is true i believe it you believe it I've known several couples where the guy gets upset because his wife shoots better than he does. And I also find that it's best not to take instruction from your spouse. Yes. Yes, I agree. I've, I've heard about that, especially in a lot of training classes where spouses go to. And um, they, they usually try to separate the spouses and yeah. stuff, too. Uh, not just because of that, but sometimes um, the coaching or, or the assistance in that, uh, it, it gets lost in translation yeah. and frustration. And then you have to 
that awkward drive home <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or flight home or whatever it is, you know? So, yeah. Uh, and I agree with you. And, and also women learn a little differently. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, and not in a bad way. No. Um, women, for me, and I, I tell this to a lot of women too, especially being new, is the natural shooters. Uh, a lot of women, in uh, uh, they do really well right off the bat. And, um, and it's really true that a lot of women come into the shooting sport and they just blow the, the, the shorts sort of off, I guess, uh, men in, yeah. in a way that it, it's just, it's amazing. And it's really good, you know, because uh, there's so many other things that, you know, men are so much better or whatever. And it's, it's funny that this is a, a man-driven sport and women come in here and just kick the shit out of us. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it is cool, you know, especially to see that. Yeah, in fact, in the last few years, women's been a very large growing demographic. Mm -hmm. And then also the minorities. Yes. Yes. So, and then that's another, and I think COVID helped with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wait, I, I should probably protect my toilet paper. Uh. <laughs> well, yeah, cause you know. Grocery stores are getting empty again. Yeah, they are. They are, man, with the uh, uh, the baby formula stuff. I don't want to say too much about that because I don't have any. Fact check. Yeah, I'll get fact checked on that one. Um, but you know what's funny is I, I had information about that, and I want to get into it so I don't get fact checked, YouTube. Um, <laughs> which, you know what? I'm actually thinking about switching over to Rumble. I got to pay to do the live streams, but I think it's almost worth it without having to deal with YouTube's bullshit. Yeah. So, and I and I hope you're listening because you suck. Yeah, because um, I've, I've noticed other people that I follow. Yeah. <laughs> that it's been really tough. It is. So I just got struck last week uh, with Josie. So uh, the audio version, and it said something that I was doing some weird of spam phishing, recommending other websites that are harmful, or, or something weird. It said if you want to know more information or contact us, click this, click that. It gave me a whole bunch of information that didn't help. There was no way to contact. There's no way to contact YouTube. I, I don't think they want you to contact them. And uh, I still have an appeal that I need to, but I, at the same time, I feel like they're just going to like, eh, whatever, you know? So that, that's the thing that kind of upsets me on that yeah. one. Yeah, because I know there's um, one guy local. He mm -hmm. used to be um, the Daily Shooter was his name, and now he's changed it. Really? I haven't. That, is that why I haven't seen his stuff? Yeah, it's now Copper Jacket. Oh, what happened? I imagine he got probably. You know, and then a lot of these people Shit. Are, are are what you would consider influencers, and they make money from it. And YouTube has had had made it so it's a lot harder to monetize themselves. Yeah, it is. It is really hard. You can't. I'm. I'm never going to be monetized doing this. You know, this is yeah. uh, the only way I think that I'll actually get anything from this is from the audio side of it. You know, from all the podcast mediums. Uh, a lot of those will allow me to advertise and or uh, have advertisements and be monetized because it is First Amendment friendly. Welcome to America, and uh, you know, <laughs> 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 fucking communist. Um, but yeah, no, it's. Yeah. It's irritating, and, and, and it's one of those things that uh, Danielle and I, we, we talked about not um, supporting it, you know, as much, and, and that's probably the time where they go, oh, okay, and uh, <laughs> then you're just going to have to listen to this or watch it recorded mm -hmm. later, because it is recorded, and I'll just throw it on Rumble. I don't give a shit. You yeah, because I know I'm at the stage where I'm going to start doing um, some tips. Yeah, and you can't do that. You can't do that. A lot of the, the gun little videos I've been putting on, uh, uh, somebody was telling me the other, you were telling me that you haven't been able to see the podcast because they're, they're not notifying you. We're getting shadow banned. Yeah. Um, the, have you seen any of the gun disassemble videos that I've been putting out? I have not seen anything. So I've been doing. I have to hunt for it. Yeah. I've been doing disassemble videos, reassemble videos, like 1911s. Like we just talked about that and how much fun they are to disassemble yeah. and reassemble, right? Yeah. So I did those videos. Uh, the next ones up, I think, are like CZ75s and stuff like that. But uh, they're not they're not going anywhere. Yeah. And I've got it. I'm subscribed with all and 
the only ones right now I'm seeing coming through is Guns and Gadgets. Yeah. And he's out of Massachusetts. Yep, yep. Jared's a good dude. Yeah. And uh, Langley Outdoor. Uh-huh. And he's out of the south somewhere. I thought he was Langley. I don't know. I get the impression he's from the south. Could be. Could be. I never actually looked into that one. I've only watched a couple of his videos. I think Kaylin sent me some of his stuff. <laughs> yeah, because he... I get... He has to watch his words again. Yep. And he says, oh, this is going to get juicy. Yes. Because he's... He, he sometimes does a little rant. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to do, especially on here. Uh, <laughs> you get carried away a little bit. So, the... Um, uh, I was going somewhere with that, with YouTube, the, the getting checked off thing. At their ass? The ARS. Uh, but there was some, There was another point where we were getting to that, and we went to a whole full subject of, like, bastardizing the, the service that I'm using right now to get to people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so... Uh, women, women shooters. That's what we were talking about. So we we're talking about uh, accuracy and, and everything else. So the only thing that uh, for females that I uh, see, yeah, because we talked about COVID, we're trying to do the full circle thing in my mind. Um, is a lot of women tend to lean back. Yes. So um, that's the only thing that ever uh, uh, I see that I need to correct. Really, besides uh, the first couple things, fundamentals, trigger presses, side alignment. Once all that stuff, and then the the, the initial bang, mm -hmm. you get used to that. Because that sometimes for some women it is pretty good, and even guys too. It, it's not just women specific, you know. I just want to make sure, or any other specifics. There's two genders, and uh, so uh, I'm sticking that in. So <laughs> fact check. <laughs> yeah, right, getting bad. Oh, you're not sensitive to the oh, other six hundred thousand fucking whatever. So uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I do find, well, part of that is because through our lives, we're taught to s s basically shoulders back, chest out. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that in shooting. No. And no, I can't. So, and then, uh, you know, and your stance. But it's interesting because I find... I was down, I was in Minnesota with my grandson. Mm -hmm. He got to shoot his two rifles that I finally brought him. Nice. Loves them. Courtesy of Controlled Pair. Yes. <laughs> and um, so I, I, well, I saw, okay, he knows what he's doing. I'll just kind of observe him a little. Well, there was a couple, a few lanes down from us. And I look at the gal and she's ho doing the teacup position. Yeah. And so I very kindly asked her, well, where'd you learn that? I don't know. So I showed her the one that is currently the most yeah, useful the most one. Yeah, most used one, yeah. And she was so surprised. Really? That it, how much more better she was shooting. And then her another comment was, well, I can't, I can't really see the target. And I go, well, that one I could have answered too, but I thought one tip for free is good enough. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you tried glasses? <laughs> right. It, it is hard to, to see the target, especially uh, depending on the caliber you're using, uh, zeroing in your, your your guns or whatever else like that. It, it can be difficult, uh, no matter what your eye uh, sight is. Yeah, because I know, like, when I'm coaching, especially at Annie because it's dark, and it's a tiny bullet that's going through that paper target, that I have a hard time trying to tell them where they're shooting. And that's why I like the reactive targets. Yeah. Because you get... You know instantly where you shot that, and you, then you can go. Rah, 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 rah. Nice, <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, um, the Annie Oakley program really good thing that you guys do. We try to send a lot of people over to you guys. Um, I know uh, you guys have a lot of coaches that have, have left uh, because of uh, either moving or whatever to you and. Uh, but yeah, they, they've gone through a lot of changes up there, and, and in the uh, <laughs> Don, right, uh, passed away. The, the yeah, operator and, of that. And so now the president is now Greg Ferrente. Okay. And he and his wife are kind of the headliners of the program. Yeah, yeah. And they uh, have most of the other male coaches are mem are members of the coalition. Nice. And you, when you think it's a commitment every Tuesday night from. Yeah. Six to nine, or a little after nine, that's quite a commitment. It is. It is. It's a good thing that you guys do. So I definitely applaud you for that one. Um, 
So, second question from uh, online, uh, uh, live on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are listening to this Will later. Rumble have the same thing? Rumble has the same thing. And then, so all I would need to do is when I get it, I just put the little bit of live link information, uh, how I set it up to the other stuff. And then instead of it going to, well, it could still even go to YouTube as long as they permit it. But it could go to there. And, uh, yeah. So we're on, like, Trovo now. We're on Streamlabs. Or on uh, uh, Twitch and everything else, too. Fuck YouTube, man. <laughs> Dude, that's what I'm saying, man. That's, that's what I've been thinking. Like, yeah, is it really worth it? Or So, oh, you retracted the question. Um, the second question. So we're still on that one. Uh, there was a fourth question that got retracted. Um, best concealed gun and or holster, do you feel? Uh, it always varies. Okay. I know people that can carry a full size. Mm -hmm. And I know people that have trouble with the micro compacts. Yeah. And so I'm still in trying to find a different holster because I've, the one I've been using for the last couple of years works well for me. But it's not the best holster. Yeah. Holster because it's, it's, well, some people call it a gun book. Okay. Because you can take it and turn it upside down and the gun falls out. Well, mine doesn't. Yeah. But, uh, so, in fact, I just got a new one in the mail that I haven't gotten yet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. But um, it just varies because <coughs> some people can't, u can't use what I carry. Yeah. And so my thing is, is, like, you don't let somebody else buy you a pair of shoes because you don't know how they're going to fit your feet and that's the same way with guns and the best thing to do is if you find it in, the, in a store and it feels good in your hands don't buy it for that reason try and find it if you can rent it or if you know somebody that owns it so that you can try it because you may like it in the store and you get out of the range and hate what hate the way it acts yeah yeah my my first uh, gun i bought and the first gun i sold was a uh, uh, yeah, just like that. It felt good. And I was like, yes, this feels amazing. And I went out of the shit range and shot. I'm like, shit, this sucks. <laughs> and uh, well, I know yeah. I'm going to be bringing in one that I they've come up came out with a little bit larger one now. Okay, the Hellcat. Yeah, yeah. And so the Pro. Yeah, they came out with yeah. the Pro. But what was interesting is I had people that are, can shoot like a all their shots in a two-inch circle. Yeah, yeah. And the Hellcat was all over the place. Unfortunately, I experienced the same thing. Uh, Springfield sent me a couple of those. Uh, one of our last desert days, we were able to take them out and test them. Uh, and it was the same thing for me. You know, uh, first shot, dead nuts right where I pointed. Every shot after that, it wasn't even hitting the steel. And it wasn't that far. It was 10 yards, uh, torso target. And it got to the point, I'm like, am I shooting blanks? What? I'm not the best shot, but I've hit stuff before. And especially at 10 yards, you know, it, what's going on? So I gave it a, to Mike. And uh, same thing, his first shot, right where his sights were pointing. And everything after that was, you know, I'm, they're great guns. People love them. And, and if they work for you, awesome. Yeah. You know? I mean, like I tell people, that's why there's so many different there gun is. companies. Yeah. And there's why there's so many different sizes right right and uh they, they come out with new stuff all the time uh technology is improving and uh, for the most part yeah so i mean you get like in the micro compact arena with the more than six or eight six hour was the first one to come out other companies realized hey that's where we got ahead and they're starting to develop their own yeah it's true it's true um so yeah, the uh, holster-wise, so you do like your holster, but what about, um, I know for a while you're using like belly bands and stuff. Yeah, and I'm, they're okay, yeah. but the problem is that unless you put a hard surface in front, yeah. you can get your finger in there and actually pull the trigger. Okay, And that's same, good to know. And same way with like the sticky holsters mm -hmm. that people have tested and they can literally get their finger in it. Like because you find, um, especially women with children, okay, they're trying to figure out, well, how do I carry? What do I do? And that's where that a lot of them want the manual safety. 
Yeah. And to me, that's one extra step you have to use. So I prefer no safeties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like that. I, I like no safeties. We we've we've talked about this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's really good. Um, and it's good information too, because again, a lot of people use belly bands. Yeah. Uh, or or a nylon universal style holster. I uh, I didn't. Well, I mean the belly band. I don't know why you'd be poking around the trigger thing anyway, you know, just, just to... Yeah, but I think what they're, they're showing out is that if, like, little children, how they like to stick their fingers into yeah. everything, and that, so that's where it could be. That could be a good thing, but yeah, you feel your kid playing for your gun on your belly, just probably move the kid's hands. Yeah. Just, I don't know. I mean, you could teach... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is once, once, once they <laughs> comprehend, yeah, you can start teaching them that <laughs> it's not a toy. No, yeah. And it's not, and, and that's that, that. Definitely recommend that for anybody with kids. Uh, so, Kalen, who is not here, but it's okay. I, I know why he's not here. I love you, buddy. He he told me not to hate him, so he's <laughs> he's been super busy at work, and I feel bad for the guy. You know, it's good though. It's job yeah. security, you know. But uh, it's hot outside, and he's having to put up a lot of signs. So, usually, for those of you guys that don't know, Kalen's usually the co-host. You know, or or Dalton, which I haven't seen Dalton in a little bit, but um, I was thinking about him the other day and was wondering how yeah. he's doing. No, yeah, yeah, he's he's been in and out uh, every once in a while, uh, but yeah, he he has been showing up the last couple times, which is fine. Um, but Kalen, yeah. uh, he's he asked, "Is it true rocking out at five finger death punch helps you shoot better?" <laughs> Asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> which we all went to a concert uh you kaylin and adam and i right and yeah. uh you didn't you didn't hang out with us you didn't do all the cool people watching that we did yeah i couldn't bar. because it was just a couple months from getting a knee yeah, replaced knee, yeah you had to go have a seat so and i don't blame you yeah. uh we there was a lot of interesting people watching where we well were. even when we left and were standing in drunken donut right <laughs> I mean, we, we, we had some great people watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I know I've been going to concerts now that they've resumed. And, you, well, you know my concert buddy, Austin. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was like, we see people that, you don't have the body to wear that. Like, a heavy set per woman with a <laughs> little pink tutu. What? Yeah. With a pink tutu? With a pink tutu. Well, what kind of concert was that? Oh, I don't remember Barbie now. Right, right. I, I'm kind of curious. Where you like? Why you want to put on a tutu? Yeah, pink tutu. Because uh, I know the kind of music she listens to, and that does not fit. No. <laughs> She's not a biologist. <laughs> right. <laughs> Basically, the difference between a man and a woman is where the plumbing is. <laughs> now we got kicked off YouTube because you just got fact checked. <laughs> <laughs> Delete. How, right? How do you know where the plumbing is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mom. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, jeez. I don't, I don't understand a lot of that shit. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting with this. When they can't say, they can't define define something like right now. The guy they're looking at for the head at the of the ATF, mm -hmm. that he can't define an assault weapon. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And he said Congress is supposed to do that. And well, you know, Congress can't decide it either. You know, an AR-15 weighs more than two huge boxes full of stuff. Yep. Um, sorry, I just got a comment on, on, on the comments. I could I couldn't keep a straight face. So. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat it in a minute. So, damn it, Jonas. So, are you sitting there making comments? He is. He is kicked out of YouTube. Right. No, right? I think we're good. Fifteen right. viewers. Hell yeah. So, goes down to four. <laughs> goes down. <laughs> Off. Uh, <laughs> it happened the other day. Dude, it did. At least we're still getting recorded, though, and everything else. 
<laughs> bro. Oh my god. Rumble. <laughs> so, right? Right? We're at the switch. Yeah. <sighs> but it, the thing is, is I find that right. for the first time in my life, I've become very political. Yeah. yeah uh, the last few years, several years, uh, yeah. I've been feeling the same way. And for a long time in, in my adult life, I, I, I really wasn't. But, but then again, I remember growing up to where there wasn't, it wasn't divided. It wasn't. No. Uh, and, and you can fact check that all the shit you want. But, you know, I, I remember growing up and not even knowing what a, a Republican or a Democrat was. Yeah. You know, and I didn't know about that until I was a senior in high school when they were like, they taught us that history class. Yeah. Um, like, wait, what's that? You know, so it was one of those things. Uh, yes, I'm going to show that one. <laughs> uh, it said hell for review. No, I'm letting that one go, Kaylin. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it held that, that for review. That last comment that I disapproved. You see it? I'm looking at something right here. Oh, you're looking at something else? Oh, you on, get the Twitch on one? Go, on going alert in the bottom, and it shows like a little red triangle with like a little fire emoji. Oh, it's, it could be like, oh, that's for the fire warning because how dry and hot it is outside. Yeah, that's there's a fire that warning out oh, today. So I thought this shit was about to blow up. <laughs> no, no, the laptop's fine. It's outside. It might blow up outside. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Congress can't find their ass with their two hands. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Kaylin. Yes. Keep that right, right? So, we were just talking about something. But yeah, the assault weapon thing. Um, you know, they do have assault shooters. <laughs> they sell them at Sam's Club. Uh, and, and other shooters. Yeah, so for bugs. So you, the you bug put, assault? Yeah, dude. You, you put rock salt in there. <laughs> oh, and you, yeah. You can shoot rock salt at, at bugs and stuff. And, and that, I mean, that thing's pretty cool. Uh, I think this kids yeah probably not yeah. probably not open yeah not open. Aww. sorry buddy I'm sorry dude don't cry sorry um you should be open until 10 p.m <laughs> oh that's a good question um so yeah uh, they do have assault weapons right yeah and they shoot salt right right so, so it's it's and a salt yes weapon yes learn english <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> make sure the pronunciation is correct, right? Or however you separate the, the lettering. Um, uh, there was a guy in here earlier with an Armalite rifle, an actual Armalite rifle. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's an actual rifle that stands for AR, you know, because everybody thinks that AR stands for assault rifle. Yeah. And it doesn't. It stands for Armalite rifle. So that, that one guy we were helping out with the grips and everything else earlier, oh, that, was, that was an Armalite rifle. Well, it, That's right? why I kept on saying that. Yeah, mm -hmm. is Armalite even in business? It is. It was a newer rifle. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. They still make, make stuff today. Yeah. So. Damn. I'll put it this way. I like my ARs. Right. Right. Yeah. All the Armalite variants. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> even the 14s. So. Yeah, because. Which so, you know, and. AR still pay. Of course, like, I'm at the stage now where I like to build them. Yes. Yeah, put parts together. Yes. Yes, because, you know, buildings just sounds weird and... and... <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm building my first one. My first you have to put parts together. Yeah. That's that's the way they, it has to be described. Constructing. Yeah. Constructing a tool. Yes. Well, I suppose build would be like building a house. Right. Right. But you still put parts together. Yeah. It, yeah. I got it. Yeah. It's but I know, like, well, let me. My first one is way too heavy for me to use. And I won't sell it. It's a cult. I won't yeah. sell it. And so I remember saying that to you and says, well, here, feel how my wife did. So I liked her, the weight of her so much that over time I assembled a bunch of parts mm -hmm. to make it nice and light and turned out with a nice fire amount of that yeah it, it was <laughs> and yeah it's um we, we put a couple of things uh together which is pretty nice yeah so speaking of things that you put together well you know what let me get to this question first uh so the other stuff was just comments which uh, i'm not going to talk about the choices. plumbing yeah <laughs> well when we were talking about biology, he just wanted to make it known because uh, of his favorite uh, actor. 
that some people's plumbing's longer than others, just in case <laughs> that wasn't known before. <laughs> right? <laughs> Brings me back to the name of an old, old, old porn star. <laughs> okay, Jonas, I'm sure is curious, so go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if the guy's alive anymore. His name was Johnny Wad. Johnny Wad. Well, you gotta remember, I've been around a few more years than you guys have. Especially, I don't know. I know the Oh, yeah, he is. I don't know what you're talking about. So, uh, I had this one question, uh, which he retracted a question earlier, which is fine. And, and uh, uh, Niskow, if you want to uh, shoot us that, that other question on a DM on Instagram, if you guys, if you want that on the Coffee and Questions uh, podcast, because uh, that, that was a, a, it wasn't a bad question if you didn't want it answered live or, or even brought out to like that uh, on anything. I wouldn't even put your name out there for sure. Uh, but if you want that question answered, you know, for sure I could definitely do that at a different time. Um, which uh, he retracted it, so I'm not going to put oh, where okay. it was. Um, he asked, or she, I'm not sure. This is a dog picture, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is the minimum age recommended for someone to start training? And <laughs> what is the minimum age you would train someone? Uh, the minimum age is depending on how mature the person is mm -hmm. because I've seen 12 year olds I would not trust to learn at all mm -hmm. but then I've worked with children as young as seven yeah and I know your daughter you started her quite young yep yep it's I think the first thing is number one just make them aware that it's not a toy yeah and if they're playing with nerf guns and squirt guns and stuff you can teach them safety rules right there no, it's a good good thing to do, uh, especially like trigger discipline and, and muzzling and, and everything yeah. else and um, the the difference between uh, the toy and, and the not. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, I agree with you there because that's kind of how I started her off. Um, I know, like, my stepson, he started at an early age, too, and um, I know a couple people, their kids, they, they've started off, but then there's a lot of kids that don't. I mean, I never grew up really around it. Uh, I, I wanted to. And I wish I kind of did because it probably would have saved me some shenanigans stuff that I could have probably blown myself. I mean, anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's all watching? So, uh, well, like 19 said, people. 19 people? Like, no, growing okay. up, I had no idea where my dad kept his shotguns and rifles. Yeah. And I wasn't, I, I didn't have a curiosity. And that's the thing. Back, even back then, and no offense, because you're, you're a tad older, so... Uh, you know that, that's the thing is a lot of people don't don't have any understanding of that. They're like, well, uh, they they'll, they'll use age as an excuse, you know, or whatever it is. And like, you know, I I have a a woman that comes in regularly, and I'm sure she's a little older than you are, and she shoots all the time. She yeah. has you know a couple guns, and this is her passion. This is what she wants to do. And don't think that you know you're subjugated to just age. Yeah, it's you know it's all here. Yeah, and I actually find that it keeping up on something where you have to continually learn yeah. helps you stay, helps your mind become more active, yeah. so which makes you stay younger. It does. It really does. I, I think so, too. Um, but, yeah, no, the, uh, uh, we, we have that a lot of times. But um, back in the day, it was a little different. My, my dad tells me stories where in Southern California, in San Diego, he would take his shotgun, walk down the street to go shoot quail, and then walk back home with them where people were like, hey, you're going to go, what are you shooting today? And it was okay with it. Yeah. And I said San Diego. Yeah. So it was more gun-friendly back when, and, it, you know, it's not as much anymore. Yeah. Well, growing up with that, you had, where I grew up, mm -hmm. you had your uh, holders, and you'd have them in the back window of your truck. Yeah. And you, your truck wouldn't be broken into. They wouldn't go for stealing it. No. Because it was just... That's how it was. Yeah, it was way of life. And, like, if you had guns in the house, a lot of times they were in a glass thing with just a little tiny... Yeah, lock a cabinet. It. Yeah, glass cabinet, yep. you know? <coughs> so you could show off your beautiful rifles. Yep. You can't have that anymore. No. No. And it, it, it's sad because they were beautiful cabinets. They're, I remember those cabinets. 
They were beautiful. And then uh, the racks that we would have in the trucks. And there's some places, Midwest, I think they still have it a little bit, but more like like the, the more uh, rural areas yeah, uh, <laughs> where it's still common for that. And I'm sure like Alaska is okay with it too. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, but that's, that's kind of rural anyway. You know, and you kind of need a rifle for random whatever. Well, you got bears. Bears. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a Yeti or two. Right, right. You never know. Bigfoot. He's real. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I agree with you with the minimum age. It, it does vary. Even uh, adults, uh, in, in some cases, <laughs> it, it takes that little bit of like, hey, this isn't a toy. This isn't Call of Duty. This is real life. And, you know, we, let's take this one step at a time. And, and anybody that's getting into firearms, definitely always recommend training uh, or um, even monitoring some YouTube channels in, in some cases. Sometimes it's not the, the most best, but at the same time, there's still a lot of good practices that are being portrayed. Um, uh, Mac, uh, oh, what's his name? Mac I, I, 10. Huh? Mac 10. Not Mac 10. This isn't Boys in the Hood. Okay, South Central. <laughs> so, huh? No, not, well, Military Arms Channel, he's, he's got good information, but uh, there's a couple guys that, that give help, helpful tips for shooting and handgun uh, handling and different stuff like that. And I'll, I'll think of it here in a few minutes, I'm sure. But yeah. he, he, he has really good uh, – uh, Grantham recommends him all the time too for training. Um, but he, he's a, yeah, an old SF Because I tell people to be careful with what they see on YouTube yeah. <laughs> because you got the – Eagle guy, yeah, versus the one that, hey, I, I tried this; it works, it's safe, yeah, that type of thing. Because that's the biggest thing, is that, like I said, I my first class is an hour of safety rules, yeah, safe handling. In fact, you know, I'm revamping stuff right now because what part of what I'm hoping to do with sight shooter is do a blended program where part of it's online and then part of it is having um, a way to work with me. Okay. No, and that would be good, too, because some people might want to do stuff with you or, like, uh, nervous to be in front of other people or whatever else, too, and they could do it in the, the safety of their own home. Yeah. Uh, as long as they understand you have to be safe with it, uh, <laughs> you yeah. know. So, yeah, uh, that, that, that would be a bad idea. I don't think there's a lot of people that do that. No, I, I had one instructor that at the beginning of COVID did it, and you, the problem I had is at the time I didn't have any equipment to be able to record myself. Yeah. Out at, out in the, and at that time we would have had to shot, shoot out in the desert. Yeah. Which I prefer anyway. But um, I didn't have it anyway. But he, had, he would do, he had a class where it was like four hours and went through a lot of stuff and it was Zoom so he could even see you drawing from your holster at that. And so really? That, that worked well. So I'm wor trying to work on a blended thing where... That'd be kind of cool. And I've come up with topics for the first four modules so it's matter now i got to sit down and write it. And um, I work with a coach that he's, he's a business coach. Yeah. But his past background was IT. Okay. So he was showing me how I can take and do record using PowerPoint and impose a little image of me talking about it. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. PowerPoint's pretty easy to use and, and pretty universal in a lot of aspects. Yeah. You can make videos out of it and different stuff, which is yeah. cool. Um, so we've got another question. Favorite handgun caliber? Favorite handgun caliber? I know the most you have is... <laughs> One particular caliber. Well, mo I mean, most of my yeah. guns are, are 9 millimeter. Yeah. But I do love my Delta Elite, and that's a 10. Yeah. You know, I find that I actually prefer a heavy gun. Okay. I find, number one, less recoil. Yeah. Feels good in the hand, shoots really well. And that's why I brought I was going to say, you brought one. I brought in my Baby Eagle. Ooh, Baby Eagle. And... The, I tell you, the first time I shot this thing, yeah. I got first shot out of it. I go, "Where's the recoil?" Yeah, the whole gun is metal. Yes. There's no polymer on it, oh. so it is. It's you know, legit. So, I mean, I I don't recommend it for somebody that has. Um, let me see if I can get this on here. 
It, it was on the beaver tail. Yeah. Bike. I don't know how you had it. I'm looking. You put way. it on the couch, actually. It's fine. Yeah. We we don't want to drop the baby eagle. Yeah. <laughs> no. and, and the thing is, is what I find too is you get so used to this yeah. position. In fact, when I was at uh, the training, they called it high justice, and I'm going, what? What's high, high justice? justice? Or high register? High register? High register? And I'm going, what? High register. I'd never heard that term. Yeah. Of course, I was in Georgia. Okay. Yeah, they don't have flavors for Kool Aid. They have colors. Yes, that was one. that's, <laughs> that's the one thing I learned yeah. about there. Yeah. Do so. you have that cherry Kool Aid? You mean red? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the Gatorade yeah. colors. So, yeah. like I said, it, this is probably one of my favorite ones to shoot because of the weight. Okay. No, that's a good gun. Uh, I've been getting turned on more to CZs because of guns like that. Yeah, I have that. Yeah. I have that one CZ Tac Ops, and. Um, that will be the first one that I get a uh, suppressor for. Oh, suppressor. I don't yes. call it. You know, cause it, it's, yeah, it's not a silencer. No. It doesn't silence much. It's just no. a noise reduction device. Yes, yes a noise reduction. Hearing reductive. safe. Right. That. So, but that's that's one of my favorites. And that's then, good. And that one I probably will leave black, because you know I don't like all black guns. No, no. No, yeah. Uh, that'd be a good gun to leave all black, too, because of tolerances. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's a couple guns I don't like. Cerakoting 1911s. Uh, yeah, well, see, in 1911, all you do is change your grip and you got change the whole look of the gun. Yeah, that's true. And I have very few of those that it was the original. Though I have one that will never be changed, and that's my Sig Nightmare Fastback. Nice. Because it's a beautiful gun to begin with. Yes. That was that one that was here, wasn't it? I uh, you got it in for me. Yes. Yes. Oh, <coughs> such a good gun. I had the Emperor Scorpion version of that, and I sold it at the beginning of COVID, thinking it was two weeks, and it wasn't, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. If anybody did not catch that for, like, the last two years, two weeks, two years, I guess, I don't know, the same fucking thing. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I mean, it's like everybody is at the stage now where, I mean, like, when I go to the concerts, practically every single uh, group, yeah. It's so thankful to be able to be out performing. Yeah. And with the shooting stuff, they're so happy to be able to do their things. Yeah, it, and it's a great community to be a part of, to who, and to go to training classes and, and to, yeah. to see the. Uh, a lot of people are intimidated. I talked about that a little bit earlier. A lot of people are intimidated, but the, the 2A community, especially when you're out shooting and, and training and stuff, it, it's all about helping each other out and becoming yeah. better and and not like i shoot better than you do and, and or anything like that i've never really no you you do get some cocky people in some aspects but at the same time for the most part everybody's really yeah. great because i know when you were doing the desert days is yeah. that you know I, i'd see things and i'd talk to, you know hey try this and it's or it was like try my gun yeah yeah, load her up and put rounds on range. Just do it. Yeah, because that's it. to me. That's really the only way you're going to know if you really like something. That's true. That's true. That's why I like doing it too. Uh, we talked about doing that again, and I kind of actually have had questions about that. Not on here right now, but uh, when we talked about it, you know, hey, when are we going to do desert days? When are we going to do desert days? Like you, nobody's really trying to drive any more than they want to. Yeah. You know, because of gas prices and stuff, and. Um, and see, the one thing I don't like is, especially your indoor ranges. Yeah. They close at five, maybe six. Yeah. Well, who can get there during the day? Yeah, uh, people that don't have a job. Yeah. Or or have uh, they work during the week you know, or weekends or whatever? Or they don't work during the week. Yeah. Huh? Or overnight people. Or or yeah yeah night people yeah if they they work graveyards that's true we're in a twenty four hour town so there's a lot of uh, different possibilities. Yeah. I almost forget about that sometimes. Until you leave Las Vegas and you go somewhere, you're like, why is everything closed at 9? For real, when yeah. I go to California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, like, though what's interesting is the range I use when I go with my grandson in Minneapolis, they're open till 9. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> some places, too, like, uh, I'm not a big drinker, but even alcohol and stuff, they, they have, like, limitations of what time you can buy it. And yeah. Different stuff like grocery stores and well, stuff don't like close down different well, places. It's fuck weird. that right here. Shit, you want to go at three in the morning? Right, <laughs> dude. It doesn't matter. You just walk, you know? Well, like here, 
Trader Joe's. Yeah. It's right in the store. Go to Minneapolis, it's in a separate room. Yeah. They and have a separate little, and then they, they'll gate it off and, and yeah. close it off and everything else. And it's only open for X amount of hours during the day. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you, you forget that when you've gotten used to 24 hour stuff. Yep. And it's it's hard to, to get used to that too. It, it would actually be kind of a nice little change because you wouldn't be as tempted, especially if you have issues or not I don't want to say issues because that just points fingers at people and uh, so <laughs> yeah uh, but at the same time it, it, it could help in, in some aspects for that uh, like gambling and stuff too there's a lot of vices in our town yeah uh, that you know that a little bit of change can help in, in a lot of different ways yeah um, but we do the nice thing about also about here vice wise is shooting we could go out in the desert within like 30 minutes and go out and just shoot a whole bunch of stuff. Where a lot of other places, a lot of states, cities, whatever, they don't have that. No. They, they don't have the, those kind of benefits. Um, unless you, you live on an X amount of acreage of land. That's my dream. Yes. I want to be able to walk out my back door. Yes. And <laughs> fire some stuff. Yes. Yeah. We talked about moving up to like Alaska. And, uh, Could uh, I take over the shop? So, <laughs> we've been talking about going to Alaska. They're like, I need three garages. <laughs> one to uh, process everything, one to store everything, and then one to actually have a garage, right? Yeah. Because, yeah, at the back, we're like, okay, there's a deer, there's a moon. What can I do? I have tags for anything? Oh, the moose was charging me. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. Like my, while. Well, like, my dream at this point is to have. A room that's concrete walls, safe door. Yes. And it's going to be my armory. Yes. See, that'd be cool. Walk-in armory. Yes. Be definitely pretty cool. Yeah, I've seen that at, uh, a, there's a gun store down in uh, Phoenix that they have that. They do. To store their guns in. Uh, we looked at that, um, and I have a buddy that makes vaults. Uh, I used to play uh, SOCOM with. Mm-hmm. And, uh, right, uh, which they're probably like, why aren't you still, why aren't you going on SOCOM? Because they open up those servers, yeah, right? Okay. And uh, I need to get my PlayStation 3 fixed. I'm sorry, Adam. Uh, different Adam. So, <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, dude. Because, yeah. I mean, the one thing with a strip mall type store yeah. is... I've heard of where they've gone through the ceiling. They got into yeah. the building next door and gone through the ceiling. Right. And in that, uh, a lot of cases, too. So one of the things that we look at is making sure we have full walls and stuff like that when we, before we moved in and make sure other security processes were, were met yeah. uh, you know, prior to moving in. Well, so. I mean, there's, there's still some stores that they don't put their guns away every night. No. And I'm going, you're asking to somebody to break in. And yeah. Definitely some different practices. It's not a requirement, you know, so a lot of people just, why, why do it? But we, we want to be that, that little extra, you know, and it doesn't take much. No. It really doesn't. I mean, you guys, I see you do it, and it doesn't take take you that long. No, it doesn't. And if you happen to have a customer coming in while you're doing it, you deal with the customer. Yeah, not a big thing. Not a big thing. Uh, speaking of customers and guns what's the next gun you brought in because that's a new gun that uh i i almost got some for the shop um and then i was like okay do i get a couple of these or do i get a bunch of these so i decided to get a bunch of the other stuff still need to get those because i want to play with it and uh i gotta play with uh, the Gatman's uh version he, he he got one of those as well <laughs> and uh it was yeah. pretty cool well what this is it's a hook with a gun yeah <laughs> <laughs> That one was extra safe because that was behind the trigger. That, that yeah. wouldn't have been okay, able to This it is a Canic, mm-hmm. and it's the Rival SFX, which is their full size. Yes. And it's got some interesting features on it. Number one, I like Canics because they have the fiber optic front sight, mm-hmm. which makes it a whole lot easier for old eyes, like mine, to find. The They've got a trigger safety. Yep. But it's not where it's obnoxious. I had some trigger safeties I hate. Yeah. And I added, it comes without the magwell, but it's in the case. Uh huh. So I added the magwell. Just makes it. And so it looks the, good. 
Yeah, and they have it in an all black version. Yes. For those that like prefer black guns. All right, black guns matter. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but brown guns shoot better. Tan guns shoot better. <laughs> Trademark control yeah, permutations. But what's also <laughs> interesting on this particular model mm-hmm. that the mag release is, is almost like extended. Yeah, that's like the standard SFX, which is nice. That was one thing that I didn't like about the Mete, is they got rid of that feature. And yeah. that was such a nice feature on the SFX. And, and I'm glad they brought it back on the Rival. Yeah, and I haven't looked at... I haven't shot my Signature Series one yet. That's right. You got the Collector one. Yeah. Yeah. The but, one out of X amount of... But, uh, I, in fact, this is the gun I used this past weekend. Okay. And how did it do? It did very well. I had a couple times where I didn't get the mag in quite enough because, as you can see, it's flush. Yep. So you got to... You know, it's, it's yeah. still early. Give it a little extra oomph. Yeah. yeah. And... It, uh-huh. And the problem I had also with Canik is for the longest time couldn't buy magazines. No, yeah, that's I true. tried an off-brand, and Doesn't it wouldn't work. feed right. No, and so I just found some now, and in fact I brought two of them in to because this particular one came with extra base plates, two yeah. extra base plates, so I could have a match. Yep, you know that, and then I am going to put a red dot on this. Yes, what, what are you looking at getting? The Leopold one you have. Oh, that's right. The Delta Point Pro. I yeah, because like it, it can, What's nice about this particular like model, mm-hmm. it comes. W- it comes with several different uh, plates. Plates for mm-hmm. this, so that'll. Make and then it. you can put a charging handle on it. <laughs> you like, ah! <laughs> yes. So yeah, that's cool. But you do. You get used to. I, I mean, I finally learned how to use the red dot, and it's like, oh man, I still don't know about it for an EDC. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people love them. Um, I, I'm still... It's its a cool feature. I love it on video games sometimes. Because uh, um, even in video games, I'll find like the red dot kind of gets lost a little bit. Yeah. You know? Well, I know that when I'm doing the VR. Um, like, <laughs> instead of like my, where I would normally put my gun, I have to like put it in a different spot uh, yeah. with, with the controllers. It's a little different. Yeah. But, um, no, I, I... Actually, I had put one on my Mede... Uh-huh. And I tried it once, and I go, okay, co-witnesses, what does that mean? And that, so finally, uh, when I went to the conference up in Colorado, yeah, that uh, it was actually taught by somebody from Glock. Okay. But I learned how to do it. You come out to your normal mm-hmm. thing, and you're a few, a little bit high, and just come down. And I go, it's the first time I've been able to shoot with both eyes open. Yeah. Because what you do is you're looking at the target... And superimpose the red dot on yep. it. Yep. And so you're not having this to concentrate on this thing. Yep. Gets rid of that old, old teaching of check your front sight, front sight, front sight, front sight, front yeah. sight alignment. And I find for me with an EDC, I'm more of a point and shoot person. Yeah. Because I ain't got t- generally in a in a situation that's very possible it's fast. can happen. You don't have time to no even, even sight. No, you don't. Um, uh, last couple of training classes I've done, uh, it was one of those things too, where it was like, "Hey, I'm not, I'm doing both eyes open. I'm, I'm just doing combat shooting." Uh, where to where I, I just doing that point shoot, and you know it, they're effective, and it, it's all within a little area. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not like Wah! in the, a little bit of a hole to where I'm, I'm doing that precise shot. Well, the thing is, I look on that type of thing is that. I, well, I took a class what taught by a former police chief mm-hmm. guy. I mean, older guy. But he says, you want to look at a, this strip. Mm-hmm. You don't want it in a single ch- spot. You want to get it in different. And that's why they, one of the things I saw, always say, two shots to the chest, one shot to the head. Well, this was more like you use a zipper. You start low and come up. Mm-hmm. And he was one of the few people that uses a picture of an actual human mm-hmm. and they'd ha- you know you could t- definitely tell they had a handgun yeah and they were shooting at you yeah and they were but they were at different angles of bo- different body angles they do that at front sight too so uh if you do the four day class uh, uh i don't know if they changed it but they had uh pictures of the uh, uh coaches uh, they, they would, as targets, you know, and uh, some would have, um, like, a can or a phone in their hand and, like, like this at you or whatever, or then a gun. 
and you had to decide uh, yeah. shoot or no shoot because uh, you went through a kill house and stuff like that, yeah. uh, which was pretty cool. But yeah, there, there's not a lot of place, people, you know, other than like the zombies. As far as like people, or it's yeah, more of I a silhouette. Yeah, I managed to find some on my favorite store, mm-hmm. Amazon. Nice. And so I said, that's going to be basically for me or yeah. like JP people that are more advanced shooters that. Yeah, you know, because I know. One time I had somebody that, well, he's a sharpshooter in the Marine Corps. Okay. And he said, could you shoot someone? And I go, five years ago, no. I could now if I had to. Right. I'd find, I'd try to get out of it in some other way. But um, it was something <laughs> like, it's like, you've, and that's what I see a lot of these brand new owners I can remember that during the pandemic, being in the old shop, yeah, and people go, can't even handle a gun properly. When can I get my permit? Yeah, and that's the thing. We we still get that too, because uh, I know you've been looking at getting your CCW training thing. Um, uh, we, we try to advise people that that's not all be all training, uh, because all it is really is laws and regs. Yeah, and uh, what you can, what you can't do. Um, or shouldn't do, and we don't. As a gun owner, you, you're not looking to be a vigilante. You're not looking at going to go shoot somebody. You don't want to. It's a tool. Yeah. It's to protect you and your loved ones. Yeah, and that's the way. And that's the way you've got to be trained. Yeah. And you, the thing is, is you've got to be comfortable with it. Yep. Like so I had somebody in my class last night that she's had her permit, and and I have a girlfriend like this too. She's got her permit, but has never handled her gun. Yeah, we get a Since lot it, of customers like that. I don't want to touch it until I get training. Well, it's good, or until I get my CCW. Well, what then? Well, then I'll carry it. But uh, have you shot it? Have you? Have you? Do you know what it is? Because that's the other thing too. I, I don't even know what I have. Well, how do you not know what you have? Yeah, I get that. Yeah. You ask them what kind of gun you got. Well, I got a nine millimeter. Yeah, it's and black. They go, There's a lot of nine millimeters out there. Right. Some good ones. Does Some it start so with ones. a G? Does it start with an F? <laughs> you know, let's go through the alphabet real quick. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like that. Right. You know, and the, right. Where'd you get in? I don't know. It was a box. Who? Cool. And, <laughs> and the thing is, is they don't know if it's re- and at that stage they don't know if it's going to be reliable. No, they don't. Because I know when I changed a, what defensive ammo. Yeah. I put in, and I, I'm running some stuff that. During the pandemic, I paid 70 bucks for a box or something mm-hmm. like that. And it mainly, I like it because it's lighter weight. Yeah. And it was like, okay, i got to make sure this likes it. Because that's the one place you don't want a failure. No. No, you don't want to learn what your gun's capable of when it's too late. Yeah. And, or what you're capable of uh, with your firearm. Because your tool's only as good as you. Yeah. And, like, if you don't know how to use a screwdriver, you should probably go to do one of those little DIY classes. Mm-hmm. You know? There, there's some places out here that do teach that kind of stuff. Uh, Home Depot has classes for free. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah, how to use a hammer. You know, there's, there's several different hammers. And you can have a hammer and not use it correctly. Yeah. yeah it's well, I know thing. what happened with me when I was in Colorado. First day I was using my gun, in and out of the holster, very confidently. Mm-hmm. Get to Sunday morning when it was freaking cold. Yeah. And I'm going, <coughs> it would not come out of the holster. Yeah. And what had happened is the retention screw, the spacer, is was something that got froze. Because mm-hmm. it was really cold that morning. So then I had to, luckily I had my EDC with me so I could still make it through the class. Right. The instructor didn't like it. Right. He thought it looked like a toy. Right. That's the one I call Riptide. <laughs> yeah. Well, her name is Ethel. Yeah. Every time you call it Ethel, I'm like, which one's that one again? Because <laughs> you name all your guns, Not too. all of them. No? Certain ones. Okay. The special ones. I do. Yes. And it, it just well, when you only have two, it's easy. Yeah. Uh, well, it's when, they, it's when they decide on their, own na- on their own name. Because, well, like my the first AR that we assembled. Yep. That was Lady. Lady. She named herself Lady. And then we, when we were working on the pistol-length one... Yeah. You kept calling it Lady Junior, and all of a sudden she decided she was going to be Baby. Yeah, Lady and Baby, that's right. Those ones I remember, clear as day, because 
I was part of those ones. Well, I guess I was part of the other ones too, but at the same time, <laughs> yeah. those ones stuck. Those yeah. Those ones stuck. Because, well, those were my first. Yeah. And then, and I, well, you know, I took that build class for yeah. an AK-47. That's right. And I called them the other day to find out what the status is, uh-huh. and it's, it's re- waiting to be painted, and I'm doing a special paint job on it, so that's part of the delay. Okay. But it's going to be shipped here, so you guys can drool over it. Ooh, nice. And there, but it's like I look at that. See that rivet there? I put that in. Yes. It's it's a different satisfaction than assembling a bunch of parts. It is. It is. I, I definitely want to take that rifle dynamics class. That's a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah. Which, if you guys aren't uh, familiar with that, and you guys are in the Las Vegas area. And have always well, the, I was the only lo- person from Las Vegas in the class. Really? I had somebody from Alaska in the class. That's cool. That's cool. And uh, but it it's just the total satisfaction that I built it, and I decided to go with the classic style with the wood <coughs> furniture, mm-hmm. because I said it, it number one it doesn't look as scary. Yeah. And when I get the paint job, it won't look as scary at, at all. And it, but it won't be feminine looking either because that's the one stipulation I said. I want it to look cool but not feminine. Yeah. I, I understand that. That's a good good thing to have too. Um, I mean, you're not saying that looking feminine is bad. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's still a, t- a tool. And yeah. uh, a lot of people look at different colored guns. Where That's why I came up with the tan gun shoot better. Yeah. Uh, because they were looking at it like, well, I don't want to have the BB gun. Like, I, I guarantee you it's as lethal if you use it incorrectly as the other ones are. Yeah. Well, I like this older instructor. I mean, he's older than I am. Uh-huh. And he said it looked like a toy. Yeah. And I said, if I have to use it, let him think it's a toy. Right. right. You know, I remember when um, Matt worked here. Yeah. He said, I'll shoot with a pink gun if I have to. It doesn't matter. Right. Well, I, I, kinda, I think I joked around with a couple customers about that where like, oh, that one's pretty, and uh, or what? What is it? They cared really about what it looked like, or they didn't care. To look, I don't remember how it went, but it was like, yeah, they're not going to have a conversation with you. You know, you pull it out. It, generally, you're going to be using it. They're like, yeah. oh my goodness, where'd you get those gold accents? You know, or, <laughs> or something. You yeah. know, uh, who colored your gun? And, yeah. You know, where'd you get that holster? It fits so good. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're not going to have that kind of conversation. So it should be something that's effective. Um, and, and if you're going to have a colored gun that, that you're going to be carrying, make sure that it is working. Make sure yeah. that yeah, you, know, you mean, go out to the range and train. Yeah, don't buy it for the color. Buy it for its usability. Because, yes. like I said, you can always color it to make something that you like. Right. Which you know I have. Right. Um, you know, tool, tool, Again, tools are the same way. Um, working on uh, even like cars and guns. So uh, I have a, a snap-on hammer. It was a hundred dollar hammer, um, and uh, uh, there was a Harbor Freight hammer that the uh, guy was using to try to get off a uh, uh, A2 front sight off of a Smith or off of a gun, off an air. And um, he was being on this thing for like forty-five minutes, and he asked if, uh, uh, "Hey, can can you help me with this?" Uh, yeah, no problem. We go get my my hammer. I went over, got my hammer, used his punch. Tap tap, bing, tap tap, bing. Different hammer, different quality. Completely yeah. two different things. Yeah. Now, now that's the other thing too with, with firearms. There, there's different spectrums of firearms. Now, there's different budgets and everything else that go with yeah. that. Yeah, and that's the one thing I always tell us: determine your budget. Yeah. And buy the best quality you can in that budget. And that's one thing I like about the Canics. Yeah. Is they're a quality gun. Budget. But they're budget friendly. Yes. And, but then and again, too, it could have been the other way where, depending on how he was using that tool, yeah. and I was using it because of the, maybe the way I'm, I'm, I'm hitting it or whatever, it's different. And it's the same with firearms. Training, yeah. using it, uh, being uh, using an application for what, you're, what it's supposed to be. Yeah. And I find, like, for a while, you know, when I wasn't going out much, Mm-hmm. That my skill suffered. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it is a perishable skill, and a lot of people don't think so, uh, for sure. But it is. It's a perishable skill, um, and and it's something that you do need to train. And, yeah. and sadly, because of ammo and, and whatever else, it's a little yeah. harder to do. One thing I will say, luckily right now, ammo is coming down in price. Yeah. Yep. 
I mean, it's still not as good as it used to be. Yeah. Though I did run across somebody, and I almost ordered it. I found 22LR that, without shipping and tax, mm -hmm. was a one penny a round. Wow. And I almost ordered, and I go, do I really need some more 22? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Probably. Yes. Uh, Never enough. Because then we need to get one of those 37 millimeter launchers to the 22. Uh, yes. <laughs> that thing was. Yes. You know, but I always get a kick out of these people that are new to the industry, mm -hmm. and they, they'll they have like two, and they're looking at their, oh, I've got an addiction. And I said, wait till you get to the point where you look at that, you hit that like you're needing another safe. Yeah. Yeah, I've known a few people that have had to upgrade saves and, and different stuff. Which well, JP just got a second one. Nice. But his, his, his safe is tiny. Yeah. Yeah, because he's, he's got a couple things, you know, yeah. you know, too. So. <laughs> yeah, I know he loves going shooting with me because he yeah. gets to try new stuff. <laughs> um, so, let's see here. We, we talked about the rival, which was cool. Uh, I still need to shoot it. Uh, I love Canix. Uh, especially for the quality, like you said. Well, plan plan a time and we can go out together. No, I know, I know. And you can try out mine. Yes. And uh, like I said, I brought in the the new Sig twenty two LR. That's right. That's right. And no, that was the three eighty the other day. The, uh, it's a P, yeah. Well, you're working on that one. Yeah. Putting a new trigger on it. Yeah. But I brought in my P three twenty two for you to go out and. Have oh, some fun do, with it. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's right. I'm not going to be available for a while, so I said, you, you get That's out right. there. That's right. I forgot I was going to do. I was going to do a couple of videos for uh, the trigger and different stuff like that. Hopefully, they don't get kicked off uh, yeah. for showing how to install something safely. Because, yeah. you know, God forbid that you be safe and, and do something proper. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I had a, a question a few a little while back uh, Glock or Six Hour? Personally, I like Sig Sauer because it fits my hand better. Right. But there's people that love their Glocks because it fits their hand better. Yeah. And there's you, you got to look at, okay, what's the angle that the handle is at versus the thing? So there's so many factors, and that's why don't do, you know, like you could say, hey, try this gun. And, you know, I love it. And I'll get out with it and go, bleh. I don't like it at all. Of course, you guys know what I like now because I've purchased so many through here so that I'll get called. Well, you remember when I got was in the hospital after with my knee replacement, and Adam calls me and tells me about the Legion she got stuck. <laughs> and I go, let me think about it next day while I'm still in the hospital. Put them aside for me. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of, too, is that that's what I like about when this particular story is you build community. Yeah. I mean, customers have gotten to know customers, and, you know, the desert shoots. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good way just to meet different people that are... It is. It is. And that's the thing, too. A lot of people don't know how th this community can be. It's it's a good thing. You know, it, it uh, you get to be more involved with people and, yeah. and uh, do something that, you know, you might not know that you like until you try it. Well, like the Signature Series. Yeah. You were showing it to somebody else, and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool. And you have right. to have a second. He, he thinks he's never going to sell them. No. And he sold them two bing bing like that. Yeah. I, I bought these on a whim. And i uh, like, oh, these things are never going to sell, but they're cool. You know? And uh, <laughs> most of the time, though, too, that, that's usually when that happens. But, yeah, I was showing that other customer, and that's when you're like, hey, uh, I want one, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, yeah, both of them right off the bat, which was really cool. And then, um, I, and I know um, when they came, when they first came, up, Sig came out with the AXG series. Yes. And the first one was a Scorpion. Yes. And then the, you got a classic in. Yep. And because you knew I was looking for one. Mm-hmm. And it's a nice gun. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we, we try to get stuff for everybody as much as we can, and it's it's still kind of hard. Yeah. You know, in some cases, as far as availability of stuff, sometimes or uh, sometimes the prices have gone. You know, oh, depending yeah. on the manufacturer. Well, CZ, I know when I was first in the looking at it, I was looking at for that P322, the MSRP on it is 400 Yeah. One place wanted 859 God damn. 
and I think I finally got it with my shipping and my taxes for came to about five hundred. Okay. So I said, well, that's not bad with shipping and, shipping ta and tax. taxes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's about right there. You know, uh, you actually got a little bit of a discount if you think about it. Uh, if MSRP is four fifty, right? Four. Oh, four. Oh, I think you said four fifty. Yeah, no, it was it's around four. Okay. And I'm sh they're going to be coming down because I know, like when I got my medic, mm -hmm. that it was a little higher. Now I'm seeing them for about a hundred dollars less. Yep, yep. The Metes, uh, they're right around the five hundred. They're a little bit more pricier than the uh, the the well, elite. Yeah, the Elite the or the SFX. Yeah, the TP9. Yeah, and then you had, well, we had the Combat Elite, which was, that, that came down a couple hundred dollars, because that one used to almost be a grand. Yeah. And then uh, that's down now like about seven, so 800 bucks. Yeah, so it's, I mean, you're still paying more than what you used to. Yeah, and, and it depends on what it is. Yeah. Uh, there, there's been a lot to where um, they have <coughs> come down. Some manufacturers have raised because of... Um, uh, availability and different stuff. Well, we we get emails every once in a while or, or whatever. Hey, so you know shipping cost is going to be this much now because of whatever. This is what we're getting charged shipping. We apologize in advance. And Yeah, well, um, I know there's one ammo company that I've gotten some things from based out of Colorado, and they're a relatively new company, but they will tell you in their emails, hey, that our costs are going up. It's, yeah. We're having a harder time finding stuff. Yeah, material, raw material sometimes is, is being a pain. Yeah. So, um, well, a few other things I wanted to bring up, but it, it's already been an hour and a half. Do you know that? Hour 24. It, whatever. It's been an hour 24? I'm, just, I'm looking at 8.30. I forgot we did ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today's an ish night. <laughs> so, um... And I definitely want to keep you too late, especially because, uh, one, it's... Uh, well, you you got to get home and well, enjoy a little bit of your anniversary. A little bit of that, yeah. But I don't know, too, if, if you're able to uh, go visit. Um, he knows I won't be back. No? <laughs> when, you been, put it this way, you've been, when you've been married as long as we are, that... Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Man. That... I mean, like, when, when I had my last knee replacement, it was like, he'd show up for maybe... 10, 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. Yeah. And it, and it was it was a long drive down to that hospital, too. Yeah. But it's like, you only can talk about so much. Yeah. I guess. Ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm getting fact-checked. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, factually, you should be able to talk about more than you... <sighs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Watch. That'd be the thing that gets kicked off. So... <laughs> So good. One of the most innocent things out there. Well, it hasn't been really published all the way yet, so you never know. But uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> other than that, I appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah. Definitely, I want to get your. Uh, I need you to text me your links. So like site shooter stuff and the Annie Oakley thing and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll put that on the description uh, to help people find you, uh, find Annie Oakley, and then get that because uh, you're you're not doing gun, uh, girl in the gun anymore. Right. I'm still a member, but I don't attend their chapter meetings. Okay. I still recommend it. Yeah. Because it is a great organization. Yeah. I just don't know how the classes are, the sessions are run anymore. Right. And that, that's one of the things I kind of forgot because we, we haven't talked about that in a while. Um, but yeah, that, that's another good program if you're a female uh, yeah. anywhere. It doesn't have to be here. It, it's yeah, a nationwide fact, chapter um, thing. Or I met some people that are uh, facilitators for, they now call it Armed Women of America. It oh. used to be the well-armed women. Okay. And now, uh, and I'm thinking, if I can find the time in my schedule, I may look at trying to bring a chapter of that here because we need more. We need more places for women to get together right. and have the com camaraderie. Yes, it definitely helps, especially our, our community, uh, two A community, and, and different stuff. Yeah. In fact, um, I just found out there's a woman that does a podcast. I think it's a three hour long podcast and she's the only female to a show. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. I, I gotta check that out to be supportive of that because that's, that's good to have. You yeah. Know? Um, cause there's, there's a lot of two way podcasts. There's only so many I listen to though too. And, um, 
uh, and it's, I don't want to say anything bad or anything. It's just they, they seem more interesting or, or whatever to you, you know. Like I hope that we, we're interesting to somebody, you know, yeah. <laughs> when we, if we give out information and different stuff. Um, so, but yeah, no, I definitely appreciate you come on here. Uh, send me those links and I'll put them on there. Um, so, uh, we'll go into, uh, our stuff, the, uh, podcast for next week, same time, same place ish. Yes. Yes. Ish. Uh, <laughs> 7, <laughs> 7 PM ish, uh, Pacific standard time Thursdays. We're live here. Actually Pacific daylight time. Pacific daylight. PST. Daylight standard. I, just say Pacific time. <laughs> Pacific time. Pacific. Uh, it's just specific time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll, we'll be here live on YouTube. We're, uh, we're going to uh, interview South Central because uh, he hasn't been interviewed yet. He's an employee here. and oh, uh, Right? <laughs> oh, he no. definitely got to tell you, find out how you named him that too. Well, we, we've talked about it, but at least now we'll, uh, we'll have to be able to do that. You know, you have a signature move that uh, Hanato did the other day, and uh, when we were doing that training class the other day, it was funny. So how do you do it? Uh, we, we came from the whole story. Went pow pow, like sideways, <laughs> full uh, South Central, dude. I, I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> so it was it was funny, you know. And it, it was one of those things. He wasn't trying to do anything like that. It just it happened. So it was fun. Natural. And I know hey. I try. Well, I try to send people to here be just because I like the customer service that's given. Appreciate that. And I hear all these horror stories with women going into shop, and they totally ignore them, or they try to say, "Oh, you're a woman, you can't handle this." And I said, "Here, there's no bias as to." No, no, we don't. We don't bias to uh, race, gender, anything. We, yeah, we, the only thing is, I know, I know if somebody comes I'm in here? smelling like pot. Right, you're here. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> yeah. But I know, like, uh, the only thing I've heard is that if somebody came in smelling like pot, you kicked them out. Well, I mean, we haven't done that in a long, long, long time. Well, I think but... people are getting are a little smarter. Yeah. Because so... that's one problem with having it legalized here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's the bad part about it, too. Uh law enforcement they, they have a problem with it when they pulled over because you they could have been their friend they could have been they could not have been them because of how um, absorbent the smoke is in, in the clothing and different stuff so there, there's a lot of things that go into that factor and it just yeah it makes it difficult you know so um, yeah and it's a federal thing yeah you know uh, that you're coming in here and filling it out and if you are inebriated by law we're not we're not giving it to you so yeah. And it's up to the FFL to, to do that as well. Um, but at the same time, if you look inebriated or anything like that, it's it's one of those, it's frowned upon. Yeah. Don't, well, I know don't. that they're looking at FFLs a lot closer now, too. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. So, which is, uh, it can be good, but it obviously can be bad, too, because it can be the most innocent thing. Or like, oh, I, you know, whatever. You know, a paperwork thing that you didn't catch or something like that. And a lot of people are... Unfortunately, you know, losing. And yeah. You're never going to be perfect. No. And, and that's the thing. There's, there's always room for improvement in, in different stuff. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I hope that it gets better. And, uh, you know, we go from there. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, our, our podcast, uh, that was kind of a weird turn. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it got a little dark there. Um, our podcast uh, Thursdays, uh, we're on, uh, you got the links page up? Yes, sir. Yay! So these are all our links. Uh, you can find us. And uh, they're not clickable. <laughs> I don't think you can click them on the YouTube thing anyway. I don't think so. You have yeah. to do it to put on in, the link in, 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 in the bio. Right. The, the link is in the bio. But, yeah, the in, the de in the description area is where I yeah. see them. Yeah, that's where I try to put them all there and, and make sure that they're there for everybody. Um so our, we're, we're pretty much found on every uh, podcast medium. So if you, you can't find us here live, at least you can listen to us as long as – well, the podcast medium says not kicked us off yet. So that's that's good. Um, I still don't understand the audio thing that we got struck for last week. I just that, – that, that bothers me. It was just the audio. Yeah. You know, and they don't, they don't tell you why. That's just upsetting. So those are all our links to, to find us. 
Uh, what else we have? We got the gaming channel, which doesn't work on there. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. It came up. It does. It's not a white page this time. Yeah, and I had to have it load, and then I transferred it. And then it transferred. All right, cool. So, so our gaming page, boom. Oh, well, somewhere. Whenever it <laughs> stops getting delayed. Um, our gaming page. So we're uh, we're starting to stream a little bit more on there. If you get into games and you you want to go online and play, uh, I still need to redo my PlayStation Plus thing so we can play, but. I guess I'll do some stuff because I'm on the PC. Yeah. Yeah, it's an annual subscription thing. You gotta like, like Xbox Gold and all that. Yeah. You gotta pay it to do it. Yeah, there is, dude. Uh, have you seen how many views I have on the controller? The uh, it's like couple tens of thousands now, on how to hook up your PlayStation controller to your PlayStation. What the fuck? I, I'm not making that up. So when I got the the PC to, that I do all this stuff on, I. Put the play, PlayStation controller on, and it, it lost its connection. I don't know. I, it's technology is beyond me. So it's connected. Uh, that's it. Yeah. It, well, it won't. You can't connect it with a, a the USB. It wouldn't connect Bluetooth. It wouldn't connect anyway. And I looked on Reddit, PlayStation, uh, everything. I looked on Google's, uh, YouTube's, for like months. And then I finally found out a way to do it. That I like, you know, I got to make a video, and it's helped <laughs> a lot of people. It's actually kind of cool to you get all these comments. Like, mm-hmm. dude, you saved my life. Like, Nice. <laughs> right? Like, I did? I'm a hero. You know what I mean? But it's, it's kind of cool to, yeah, to do see, that. Gaming is something I've never gotten into. It's fun. It's, it's a good stress It's relief. never too late. <laughs> right. Right. Did you get a dedicated controller for PC? Oh, uh, yeah. Christian gave me an Xbox controller. Yeah. No, yeah. I've been using the shit out of Thank you, Christian. Oh, whatever. <laughs> okay, good to know. Good to know. So yeah, we have our gaming channel, uh, which you can definitely, if you want to come on and, and, and game with us on Call of Duty or different stuff like that. We'll, we'll you have to prove yourself too. Yeah, right. You can't have noobs. Right? No, I don't care. I suck. I do, because really? I'm trying to win. You trying to win? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying enough. to get a dub. <laughs> Right, right. There's stuff to the right. Oh, let's go left. Love you, Kaylin. Yeah, somewhere, Kaylin's going, meh. So, uh, what else we got on there? That, that's fun. Huh? Coffee and questions. Coffee and questions. I need to do that again. So I need questions for that. If you guys are watching and you're like, hey, uh, like Nascau, dude, if you're there and you're like, hey, I want to know that question that, that you retracted, send it to us. You know, I'm not going to put your name out there and – Especially if you're a little nervous of it or whatever else, you know, give me those questions, man. I'll, I will talk about it um, and try to give you as much information. The nice thing about that too is it gives me time, especially if it's a research question. I could get you that that information and, and then try to be a, as informative as I can. And, a, and then a lot of times is they're probably not the only person that right wanting an answer. Right, there's there's other people that that want an answer for it and, and different stuff. So you know, it, it's not a bad thing to ask. Yeah, because I know I, well, I had to YouTube to figure out how to clean a revolver. Right. And then I, I thought the person was somebody that would know what to do. They put the bore snake in from the muzzle end. Oh, yeah. And I'm going, oh, you know, and, and as I'm learning things more, I go, wait a minute. The bore snake's got to go the same direction as the bullet. Exactly. Yes. You know, and then. Yeah, we don't back flush those. No. <laughs> I don't know, do we? We should make it. Yeah, yeah, we could do that, right? On Instagram? Let's do it. Let's do it. Salem. Oh. Uh, well, speaking of, if you guys are on our Facebook page, which you, if you guys want to be a member of that, uh, we, we, I can actually stream to that, too. Um, Facebook? Yeah. We, 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 huh? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Jonas right. finally got out of Facebook jail, so you're going to see more posts on there now. Yeah. Are you in Facebook jail? Yeah, I'm on uh, 218 days out of this year. <laughs> it's out of the year almost. That's 68 more days than Justice Snow Live. Yeah. Well, luckily. <laughs> Back to yeah. I, well, I, On my personal page, I don't, don't put a bunch of stuff on, but I know on my business page, when they started running the ads, they had to jump hoops. To be able to prove that 
they had to prove that they w I wasn't selling product. Yeah. I was giving. I was an instructor. Yep. Giving s safety, and it t took them a while to get for Facebook to allow that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's still trying to reactivate his Facebook and stuff. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's all. That's the bad part, too, about all this stuff, so. Yeah, because I know a lot of times when you're looking for information that you'll get their Facebook page and then you can click on website to get to where you really want to go because I find that Google tends to send you to the Facebook page first. It, it can, for sure. Uh, it, it, it likes to do that. I don't know how the Google ad algorithm stuff is or whatever it no, is. No, I don't either. That's that's my that's for my social media department. To right, do. <laughs> right. The the uh, SEO stuff or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. Um. So Hanato, mm, I don't know. I would like to, but in all reality, um, I don't know if we are uh, bringing back guys? desert days, huh? Do you see paying for the gas? Right. Well, I mean, gas, dude. Um, my, my diesel. I have a diesel Jeep. Right? The the gas station right over here in the corner never has it now. So it's like the second time, because I fill up like every other week, or every other other week or whatever, right? Yeah. And uh, this is the second time in a row, dude. Had none of the pumps work. Um, within like over a month. Yeah. And uh, the other station up the street, it's like certain pumps only work. Um, the one up here on uh, Buffalo. No, because when I fill up, I fill up like a dumbass, and I fill up when I need to. <laughs> like I wait too long. Well, yeah, but the thing is, is that I'm, I, I'm getting getting a form. We tend to fill up the same place, mm -hmm. and it's gradually creeping up to five bucks a gallon, and it, it's like I drive down the road and I go. Okay, Air regular is five fifteen. Come down here, it's four ninety three. You know, it's gas is all priced all over the place. Right. Yeah, diesel right now is like over five dollars. Well, it's been over five dollars. Yeah, diesel. Yeah, with this. Yeah, and I know like our Costco's don't have it, um, but I heard today somebody was saying that Costco's up in Utah, they all have it. Uh, I can't remember who I was talking to about that, but yeah, that I wouldn't know. I haven't gone there. But yeah, I'm not gonna drive there just for diesel. Yeah, they're like, yeah, they have it in St. George. Like, I'm gonna drive to St. George when I'm empty to fill. Again, I don't remember who I was talking to, but I was kind of like in my mind, like, I mean, I guess I can move to Utah. It'd be kind of cool, but yeah, but then you gotta pay state income tax. <laughs> Did you gotta pay state income tax there? Mm-hmm. Well, on that bombshell, uh, <laughs> that's kind of why. Thank you for watching. I, right. <laughs> that's why I ended up in Nevada. Oh, okay. Good to know. Because I didn't want to move to South Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the other five people that live there didn't want to move there either. Yeah. <laughs> the attraction is called the Corn Palace. The yep. Corn Palace. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Seen it. <laughs> they have a big polka festival. And that is... I, though I get people telling me I should move to Tennessee. Right. I hear that, too. I hear that, too. I get told that, uh, that I need to go look out that way. But I haven't. I haven't, I haven't really looked that way. Yeah. My life right now is too settled here in Las Vegas. Yeah. It, yeah. It'd be nice to, to, to look at different stuff, but you never know. It's kind of kind of a weird thing to do. I'm not leaving you the store. So, <laughs> on... Uh, <laughs> you should. Right. So, uh, other than that, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe. Uh, thanks for all the comments today, uh, even the ones from Jonas. And, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> it does help with the algorithm. It, it does help with people getting to see everything, and uh, it really does. So, at least that's what I get told when I'm watching other people's channels, I get shadow banned. So, and I'll take their word for it. They've been doing a lot longer than me. Um, so, yeah, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Um, See you guys next week, 7 o'clock-ish, uh, Pacific time, and uh, <laughs> here live on uh, YouTube. Take care, guys. Be safe.